Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Bilal Abdul Karim, and this is the BAK Show. Uh, today we're going to be discussing the issues surrounding a very, very uh, desperate people, which are the Rohingya. They've been forced out of their homes in Myanmar, and uh, there are about 900,000 of them um, in refugee camps in Cox's Bazar in Bangladesh. And today, to help us to be able to understand some of these nuances, we have, by way of Skype, Khin Mong, who is the uh, founder and executive director of Rohingya Youth Association, or the RYA, and he's also the coordinator of Free Rohingya Coalition. And I want to say to you, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, thank you for joining us here today. Um, uh, I really want to get some information from you about what's going on out there particularly because of the whole coronavirus pandemic, there's very little uh, information that's coming out these days, and we want to make sure that we keep our uh, viewers up to speed. Now, first, I want to talk about Human Rights Watch. Human Rights Watch came out with a report, and basically they, uh, uh, they said that the Bangladesh government's new COVID-19 restrictions actually restrict the aid access that the Rohingya in the refugee camps have access to. What's the situation like there at Cox Bazaar regarding aid and its aid reaching you? Yeah, the, the condition of the especially Cox Bazaar is dire condition because you know the Cox Bazaar is the overpopulated uh, the area. Uh, 1.2 million the Rohingya will be living together and there is the also host community. That's why I mean that Kaukasbazar is the one of the world uh, density population area. That's why we also everyone fear the coronavirus and the condition of the Kaukasbazar is very, very, very uh, dire condition because already government declared Kaukasbazar was locked on since uh, the six, three, uh, three weeks ago until now, but the camp is totally locked down. That's why we cannot out of the our shelter, we cannot go to the shop, we cannot go to the market. That's why our condition is very, very uh, unhappy and the dire condition. If the people, they, if the lockdown will carry on continue, the people will be hunger because the, the ration and the food distribution also limitation by the government direction. The, the assistant NGO and aid worker is also assessed uh, the limitation to work in, inside of the, uh, the camp. That's why the camp condition is very dire condition and everyone fear the coronavirus because it is one of the world global challenge diseases today. That's why world should be uh, work uh, together and solidarity and cooperation will be uh, needed, necessary for one. And especially, I want to request to the wall and the wall health organization to come forward to the Bangladesh, especially to help the Rohingya community, uh, all the, the host community around the refugee camp. Our condition is very, very unhappy because, as you know, recently government confirmed more than 20 cases in the Cox Bazar, who is the very close to the Rohingya refugee. If that this is the one of the big and challenges to wall, it happening in the Rohingya uh, refugee camp, it will be really, really, really big problem for the wall to control because there is our populated country. There is no, there is no, uh, we cannot be maintained the social distance and we cannot be uh, able to get uh, the real information because the internet is also uh, locked on. There is no internet available to get the update. This is the one of the channels. That's why. We survived with the Rohingya refugees did not get the properly and the correct information about the COVID-19. That's why we also need the access to uh, the network to get update information around the world, what is the happening and what is the ongoing. For example, most of our survivors did not know they are the uh, coronavirus. This is happening in the Cox Bazaar. Mostly the 99% did not know about the Cox Bazaar area. There is some uh, the patient already covered by the government uh, research team, but some people who are educated who can access the information they are uh, getting that information. It is very important to know Kaukasbazar is very nearest uh, area for us. If we do not know there is the, any kind of uh, the effective person in the Kaukasbazar, 
it is really, really uh, upset news for everyone. That's why antenna network is very important. Why was the internet cut? Yeah, it is the government. Government in the states uh, last uh, 2019 September, the government cut down the network in the area of the uh, Rivuzikam. But it is better no government why government cut off the entire network. But in this time, in this the world challenge time, government should be open the internet. It is really necessary for everyone. Have they given an official reason as to why the internet was cut? Yeah, government given because the government want to reduce some the activity, especially drug and other uh, activity. But it is not until clear. But government uh, already given the one reason we ha we, ha we need to maintain the camp. That's why ne if you stop the network, there will be reduced so many things. It is the government formally information. But until not clear, the what is the main reason the blocking the network by the government side? All right, now I want to move on to another topic. Um, on Monday, just this, uh, just uh, yesterday, um, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights um, uh, basically warned of a humanitarian uh, tragedy of terrible proportions because there are boats, boatloads of uh, Rohingya refugees that are stranded at sea, some of them for months. Do you know of, of, these, uh, of, of this situation because you have limited access to the internet? Yeah, I, I know that uh, information about the survivor of in, in the river. It is very one of the horrified uh, history. It is the one of the wall, the humanitarian access. As you know, some of the 400 people safe, accused by the Bangladesh government who are already spending more than two months in the river. Who, who are trying to enter the Malaysia and the uh, Thailand, and then they are authority to push back to uh, the river, and finally the survivor arrived to the Bangladesh. Same way, there is uh, all, uh, over 500 people with two boats are already uh, floating in the river. There is so many reports coming up. It is actually right. We now got some information about some survivor are failing, and they are related from the Malaysia and the Bangladesh. They are know about their uh, relative history. But it is the one thing we should be realized. The, the coronavirus is one of the world challenge pandemics we already appreciate. But otherwise, the people who are uh, seeking justice and the, I mean the asylum and the from, come from the persecution, they in, try to Malaysia. Malaysia and the Thailand should be accept them. Because if they uh, push back again, it will be again international humanitarian law. That's why the reason given by the COVID-19, it is not enough to, to the survivor who are living in the river. They, yes. they are the full of the rigs of their life. If you say, if you think, to the more than 500 people were living in the river. If there is the any happen without food and water, how can they stay long time in the river? As a humanitarian process, we have to understand that we have to feel yes. the sympathy about those people who are living right now in the uh, river. This is the Ramzan, the most valuable man for the Muslim. What the, that uh, the people condition in the river? They cannot be uh, fasting. They cannot be eaten. This is the we should be considered for those people who are living in the river. We should be same empathy. If we are really Muslim, we should be considered. The, in, in the Muslim, if you give the, some the food for the to to keep in the festival, it is really great. Uh, the the donation for everyone, it is the proven Muhammad sallallahu alaihi mentioned like that. If you if you yes. provide, if you help the, those people to come there and the land area and to pay, to keep their festival, it is really good thing for every Muslim. What is the atmosphere like there um, now? in Ramadan, um, there at the refugee camps. What's the feeling amongst a lot of the people there? Yeah, this is also, uh, this is the, for our, in, in our life, the first time we cannot uh, pray at the mock and the Trabi and everything. But it is the first time in our life we are facing this kind of the, uh, the difficulty. 
For that, it will really not good for every Muslim because we cannot go to the mosque, we cannot uh, pray the tarabi. This is also uh, difficult for everyone. And this is also the, uh, the dire condition in the refugee camp. That's why we also face in difficulty rather than last year. If you could speak directly to Muslims around the world and they were watching this interview, what would you want to say to them? What do you want them to know about your situation? What would yeah, you like to say to them? It is, it, it is really, really important. It is uh, actually the humanitarian ground. First, fa first of all, I want to highlight the condition of the Syrian Muslim and Syrian refugee and the Palestine and the Kashmir. We all are the same condition now today. We have the own state like you have the known. We have the own property like you have, you belong now. We have the same the the relative uh, who is you belong now. But today we become a stillless people and our own state. Like today we are uh, suffering a lot of difficulty for our uh, the, uh, our own. Uh, that's why I want to request to the world the Muslims. This is the world Muslim crisis and according to our religion, if any Muslim facing the difficulty, everyone has the responsibility to protect him or them. Why the wall are silent to our crisis? Like the, as you know, Syrian Muslim and the Palestine and the Kashmir, this they happened a long time. They live in the refugee camp, but until they did not solve. Like the, we are living in the Bangladesh since two, uh, three years ago, there is nothing outcome. That's why the Muslim Ummah and the Muslim, the country should be forward and the unite to speak of the, the persecution, the Muslim around the world. They have the responsibility uh, according to our religion. We are Muslim. We have the right to protect our brother and sister from the, this kind of the thing. That's why the Muslim world, the Ummah, especially the, the, the OIC country, even the Saudi Arabia have the responsibility to protect the, our people. Not only the Rohingya part of the Kashmir and the, the Palestine and the Syria around the wall, the suffering this kind of the holy, the holy, the months of the Ramzan, they are suffering the condition, the like dire condition. They have to know enough food, they have to know enough rice, and they have no enough everything. Even they have not have the enough iftari. What you feeling today for this kind of the vulnerable people around the wall? Who are suffering, or have they belong their own state, or have they belong their own property, or have they belong on their uh, relative uh, since ago, but they lost everything. They are no persecution around the, uh, their area, but they are living long time in the refugee camp. If you do not solve their crisis, if you are a human being, if you are Muslim, you have the right to solve them. You have the right to speak out of that the vulnerable community according to our religion. The proven Muhammad Sallallahu mentioned every Muslim have the responsibility to those who are vulnerable, those who are persecution, who are uh, getting injustice from the anywhere. You have to uh, unite and solidarity and cooperation to work together to get the justice for those people who are suffering and the persecution from the different kind of the activity.